What's going on everyone, this is Anton and in this video we are going to talk about using jQL with SAS and CoffeeScript. If you take a look out the window you can see that it's 2015 already and nobody wants to spend their time by typing out unnecessary characters. To avoid this we have SAS and CoffeeScript to get rid of unwanted syntax and extend features of both CSS and JavaScript. All jQL users used to have to set up task runners or separate applications that would turn their SAS into CSS and CoffeeScript into JavaScript. Nowadays things are much easier. Now jQL supports both right out of the box, but let's take a closer look at each one. Let's start with SAS. SAS is a CSS preprocessor, the most popular CSS preprocessor. In fact, it's so popular that Twitter Bootstrap has officially switched from using LAST to SAS. Important to note is that SAS has two syntaxes. One is SCSS that looks much like the good old CSS with semicolons and braces and SAS which got rid of all curly braces and semicolons. Both have great features such as variables, mixes and inheritance. To start using SAS and free up some time, all you have to do is to create a file with that SCSS or that SAS extension to an empty front matter. Let's add a few styles to see how it works. Then link it to our site in the head include file. Once we save the file you can see in the terminal that Jekyll has processed our SAS into CSS and we can see the changes apply on the site. Important to mention that if you have an error in your SAS file, Jekyll will throw an error in the terminal. Let's remove the unwanted semicolon and remove the default styles that come with Jekyll. If you're working on a large project, your SAS file can get really big and navigating around it can become a difficult task. To simplify it, we have an import rule with SAS. You can break your file into separate files and SAS will combine them into one CSS file. First, let's move the content of your style that sas to a new file. Save it in the underscore sas folder and call it underscore base that sas. Then create another file and call it underscore custom that sas and add a custom style to it. Our separate files don't need the front matter, so let's remove it from the base file. Now we can tell sas to add these two files together in the style that sas file by saying add import space and the name of the file in quotes without the extension. If you go to site css style that css, you can see that jQL has compiled our sas and we can see styles from both files in one. Now let's say that for some reason you are not happy by using the default underscore sas folder name and you want it to be a custom sas directory folder name. You can do this in the config file by adding sas colon and on the next line sas underscore dir colon and your custom name. Save the file and restart Jekyll. Don't forget to rename your sas folder. You can see that Jekyll will throw an error and the reason for that is that it doesn't watch for changes inside of the config file. To make it work again let's restart Jekyll and everything works again. Wouldn't it be a better practice to compress our CSS? Well, Jekyll can do it right out of the box too. Let's add style compressed. By default Jekyll will compile your SAS in the expanded style. You can specify the style you want in the config file also. You can choose from nested, expanded, compact or compressed. In production side the good practice will be to use compressed style as it removes all white spaces from your CSS file to reduce the file size and the page load time. Don't forget to restart jQL to apply the changes in the config file and see what it looks like now. Now let's take a look at CoffeeScript. The most popular comment on the web about CoffeeScript is that it's full of syntax sugar. Same as SAS, we only need to create a file with extension .coffee with an empty front matter. For example purposes, let's write a quick function that will check what time of the day it is and will greet you appropriately in the console log. Don't forget to add your script to the script's include file. Save both files and you'll see how Jekyll has generated the JS file. Now we will be greeted appropriately to the time zone that we are in. If you are willing to read more about SAS and CoffeeScript, you can find the documentations in the description. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. As always, this is Anton. Bye.